Climatrix. Today we're going to have a look at the Gauteng Prelim for 2020. Please have a go at the exam before you actually watch these videos. If you need access to the paper and the data, you can find that in the description below. Let's start off with question 1. Document was created to give information on the various Olympic athletes and events. Open the One Modern Word Processing document and insert your name and surname in the header or footer. Now I know a lot of my students didn't do this. Um, you think it's not necessary, but trust me it is. In the final exam, this actually says insert your exam number in the header or footer, and there's a very good reason why they ask this. If there is something wrong with a copying, if something went wrong with the copying of your files or something went wrong, they need something for you to identify yourself with. Okay, and this is your only opportunity to identify yourself. So please don't skip over this part. Actually do that. It's very, very important to do it in the files that they ask this of you. All right. So we double click. We go to one modern and right click edit header and just type in the number or your name. But in the final, it's going to be your number. And let's go back to the paper. 1.1. Add the following to the properties of the document. Insert history in Olympics as the document subtitle. Insert Olympics as one of the categories of the document. Replace the author with O'Grady. Okay, that's important. Replace. Not insert O'Grady. Replace. All right, so let's go. We go to File. In Office 365, you have to click on Info as well, and you have to click on Show All Properties. Now you'll see here, there isn't actually something called Subtitle, all right? So, and also if I go into there, there's nothing called Subtitle. But if you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's the thing that says Subtitle. So just type it in there. Okay, for some reason it's white, don't know why, can't change it. But if we go back to the properties, you'll see it's actually showed up now on the in the subject. So subject and subtitle apparently is the same thing. Now, next up, categories. We need to add a category called Olympics. And then lastly, we need to replace the author with O'Grady. All right, now this is a tricky one. You first have to remove this person. Yes, there you go. And now we have to add O'Grady. Let's see. There you go. I just had to click away. So sometimes you've got to click a button. It's not always too straightforward. If you're really struggling, you can go to advanced properties and just change it there. It's a bit easier there. Okay, but you can't add an extra author. You actually need to replace the author that was there so that the existing one isn't there anymore. 1.2. Insert an automatic table of contents as follows. Add the table of contents below the heading table of contents on the second page. Ensure that the table of contents is in the classic format. Apply any tab leader. All right. Now, some of you in my class apparently got it right to somehow put the table of contents behind the cover page. Okay, now that's not going to be marked correct in the finals. Okay, I just subtracted some marks because I somehow picked it up. But you need to insert it in the correct place. Okay, it needs to be inserted underneath the table of contents heading. Now, be careful to not just click there because where I've actually clicked is if I switch on my show hide, I've clicked after the page break. So if I insert something now, it's going to end up on the next page. Don't do that. Okay, just click right underneath it and make sure your cursor is on the left hand side. References, table of contents. And even if you don't know where that is, you can always go search if you're using Office 2016 or later, table of contents. Okay, and then you're never going to use one of these, okay? I know they say an automatic table of contents. That doesn't mean you need to use one of these. You're always going to choose a custom one because that's where you can change the style and all the other things, the levels and everything. So we're going to choose the classic style 
and then we need to change the tab leader to something that we want. Okay, now if you didn't change the style, you can't get a, a mark for the tab leader. Okay, all right, there you go. 1.3 set the margins of the whole document to normal. Now that should set some alarm bells off, even if the two marks allocation didn't. It says the whole document should be set to normal, not just set the margins. So if we actually click here, you'll see there's a section break. So if you just stand here and change the margins to normal, it just does it for this section. You actually have to select the entire document. So use Control A to select everything so that everything is selected and then change the margins to normal so that you can get your two marks. 1.4 Modify and update the Olympics style as follows. Change the font size to 18 points, center the text and apply any text effect of your choice. Okay, so styles we go and do over here. This is not the style. Okay, I know some people did that. That's not what they're talking about. This is actually using the Olympic style. So, but you wouldn't even have known that. You have to go to the styles. We're editing the style. You get no marks if you do the formatting manually. Okay, so we right click and we say modify. Then we change it to 18 points. We can center align it. Okay. And we need to apply a text effect. Now, if we go here, you can see format text effects. That's the one right at the bottom here. Now, please don't go and choose a standard text full because that's not really a fancy text effect. These are the funny, fancy text effects, all right? So you can change, put shadow on, reflection, anything, and try to use a preset rather than just, I know some of you like did something like that, and you can't really see it. I can see it because of the way I mark it, but it's difficult to see. So I think it's better just to use actually a preset because then one can see it clearly, all right? Okay. Now, the safest way to do this is to actually say automatically update. And that way you see it's updated here. That's the style. And now if I go to select all, you'll see there are 11 instances that has this style or that have, there are 11 instances that have this style. 1.5, set the hyphenation of the whole document so that all words are automatically hyphenated. This one was fortunately quite easy. You can just save this again. It's just to click control all, but I think in this instance it does apply it automatically everywhere. Then you can just go search here if you don't know where to find it. Hyphenation, change hyphenation and make it automatic. For those of you who don't use Office 2016, um, you can do this on the layout tab. And there it is hyphenation okay now the next one wasn't answered that well let's see 1.6 add line numbering as follows start from the page after the page with the table of contents restart numbering on each page okay so, in other words, this page mustn't have numbering, but this page should have numbering, and it then has to restart on each page. Now, even if you don't know what it's, where it is or what it's called, if I can just search it, line numbering, there you go, show line numbers, and all I have to do is I just choose restart each page, okay? And fortunately, because there was already a section break inserted, it automatically only applies in this section. It's can be, it can be found on the layout tab, 
line numbers. 1.7. Find the smart art on the page after the heading Usain Bolt and make the following changes. Change the layout to Pi Process. Set the colors to any of the primary theme colors. Add the text 400 meters as one of the bullets in the last shape, Carifta Game 2005. Okay, so here's Usain Bolt, and then after that, ah, here's the Smart Art. Okay, click on it, Smart Art Design. Now, I don't know what the Pi process looks like, but if I click here, I can start looking for it. But I don't, I need to know what the processes are. So if I go to More Layouts, you'll see Process, that's the easiest way to go look for it. And now, if I hover over these, you'll see it actually shows me the name. Okay, so you might have to look for a while to find it, but I think, where is it, where is it? Pi process, ah, so it's actually just the one next to it. You'll see usually they don't change it, that it's something drastically different that you'll be searching for hours. Okay, so it was actually just the next one. You see it was that one and you just had to go to the next one. All right, we have to change the colors to the primary, any of the primary theme colors. Do you see these? So any one of these that you like, I'll just go with the first one. And then lastly we have to add 200 to this last item. So I just go click at the end of the 200 meters, press enter and then to, for, type in 400 with a space M. All right, if you don't have this text panel over here, you can just click on this button to activate it. Okay. Or over here on the Smart Art Design tab, text pane. 1.8. Find the text below the heading Achievements and ensure that it displays as shown in the example below. All right, so they show us here year, games, age, city, and middle, and there's a bunch of tabs that we need to set. Do you see there's a three left tab, a six center tab, a eight center tab, and an eleven and a half um, right tab. All right, so let's go see what we have already. Select that and see Okay, so it's easy to see the 3 has already been set, the 6 has already been set. So all we need to set is the 8 and the 11 and a half. Okay, I'll show you the safest way to do this and then a faster life hack way, but there is a little bit of risk attached to that. So the safest way to do this is to go to the paragraph settings, tabs, and to apply an 8 centimeter center tab set and an 11 and a half centimeter right tab set okay and it's actually set those two and then what one needs to do is go and remove the extra tab stops that was actually or the tab keys that was literally pressed on the keyboard so somebody pressed the tab key too many times Right, now it looks correct. Now, the easier way to do this, but it has a little bit of risk attached, is to do this manually. So I'm going to remove these two tabs. So the easier way is to do this on the ribbon itself. If you have the ruler activated, so on the view tab, ruler is activated. You can change the tabs on the side here. So I want to put a center tab, make sure it's a center tab and not a decimal tab, at 8. But you've got to click right on 8. I mean, it can't be like, if you do that, you're not going to get the mark. Okay, it has to be exactly 8. And then I want a right tab at 11 and a half. Same thing, if you do it at 11, 2.5, you're not going to get the mark. So that's why it's a little bit risky because if your measurement isn't exactly correct, 
then you're not going to get your marks. But this is easier, and especially if you forget where to do it the other way, this is maybe an easy way to do it. 1.9. Insert any table of figures on the last page. Ensure that the label and number does not display. Okay, now some of you did something very strange here. So let's search again. Table of figures. Okay, insert table of figures. Now the label and number should not display. I don't know why you didn't show the page numbers. Why can't the page number show? That's not what they're talking about. They're saying the label and the number mustn't show. Do you see the difference? Figure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Don't include that. You see there, there it doesn't show. So that's all you had to do. Okay? And happy days. There we have it. All done with question 1.